You've got mail. Summer of 1996. I was sitting in my office near the end of the work day when my receptionist buzzed me to say that I had a call from Anthony Andrioli. Anthony was my cousin, so I was pleased and curious about the call. There are times when one hears something in a person's voice that makes you feel that the message is ominous. This was one of those times. Anthony explained that he had just received an email from someone which had obviously been misdirected to A.L. Andrioli, which was Anthony's address. It was clear that the email should have been sent to N A L Andriolo. Anthony sent a message to the person who had initiated the memo telling him it had gone astray and asking him about the coincidence of the names. The man on the other end of the email confirmed that his last name was Andri also Andrioli, but that he used O at the end of his email because the I had been taken and he gave Anthony his phone number and Anthony called. The first question the two addressed was to compare their names. Anthony said, my name is Anthony Lewis Andrioli. The man on the other phone said, my name is Andrew Lewis Andrioli Jr. Anthony told him that his father's name was Andrew Lewis Andrioli. Anthony had often wondered why his middle name was spelled differently from his father's. Anthony explained that his father had died in June of that year. Then Anthony asked Andrew what he knew about his father. Andrew said his mother had told him that during World War II, she and his father had lived with his father's sister and her husband in Southern California. And she also mentioned that the sister's husband was a Disney cartoonist. That statement made Anthony start connecting things up because my dad, Jerry Hathcock, had been a Disney animator off and on before, during, and after World War II. At that point, Anthony said he needed to talk to some family members and he would call back. When I picked up the phone and said hello to my cousin, Anthony started by quickly relating to me what he had learned from Andrew. He explained that it was the reference to Disney cartoonist which started things clicking in his mind. He said, Shay, do you know anything about this? I took a deep breath and began to tell him what I knew. This is what I told him. During World War II, Anthony's father lived with us in Culver City. To me, he was always Uncle Andy. He used to buy ice cream push-ups from the good humor man and put one in the tiny freezer box inside our ice box. I got the ice cream when I got up from my nap. I also remembered that Uncle Andy had a girlfriend who was Native American and that she also lived with us. She took care of me and my sister when mother worked at Woolworths up on Pico Boulevard. I remembered that her name was Edith and that she had made me an Indian costume from deer skin for Halloween. I still have that little costume or what's left of it. I told Anthony that I would call my parents and get back to him with more information if they had more. Dad answered the phone and I explained the reason for my call and what little I remembered about that time. Dad said that in fact Edith had lived with us for a period of time during the war. Andy was in the Navy but was stationed in San Diego. His foot had been injured early on and he remained in the San Diego area for his entire period of service. He stayed with us when he was home on leave. Neither mom or dad recalled very much about Edith, except that she stayed with us for a period of time during the war. At some point she got pregnant and my uncle was going to marry her. Andy and Edith went to the county clerk's office to get a marriage license, but they were denied because Edith had an unacceptable fraction of Chinese blood and at that time, there was a state law which prohibited marriage between Chinese and Caucasians. In the meantime, Edith became ill with tuberculosis, which was quite common at that time. She finally decided to go home to the Hoopa Reservation in Northern California. By the time she left, she was quite ill. My parents didn't hear from her again, and so they believed she and her child had died. Anthony was stunned. He had a brother he never knew existed. He and Andrew made arrangements to meet 
and spent the next few weeks exchanging information and getting acquainted. On Labor Day weekend, Anthony invited the family to his home for a getting acquainted time. We were all there for the party.